Picture this, a continent on the move. From the icy ports of Scandinavia to the sun-baked coasts of Spain, Europe is lacing itself together with steel rails, high-speed corridors, and next-generation airports, a transport revolution decades in the making. At the heart of this grand vision lies a single, audacious project with a price tag of $34 billion. It's not just an airport, not just a railway, not just a hub for buses, cargo, and commerce. This is an all-in-one mega gateway built to connect millions of passengers and thousands of kilometers of rail, road, and air routes in one seamless flow. And here's the kicker. It's rising not in London, Paris, or Berlin, but in a country perfectly placed at Europe's crossroads, a place with the ambition to become the beating heart of continental travel. It's bigger than JFK, bolder than Heathrow, and designed to transform how Europe moves forever. Welcome to the project set to redefine the map and the future of European transport. Why Europe Needs a Mega Hub Europe is home to one of the most extraordinary travel arrangements in the world, the Schengen area. Spanning 29 countries and covering over 4 million square kilometers, it allows people to move across borders without visas or passport checks. The result? A vast interconnected zone where a weekend getaway in Barcelona, a business meeting in Vienna, and a ski trip in the Alps can all happen in the same week without the bureaucratic delays that once slowed travel. But that freedom of movement comes with a challenge. Infrastructure. While Western Europe boasts some of the world's busiest and most efficient airports, high-speed rail lines and road networks, the same can't always be said for Central and Eastern Europe. Many routes are fragmented. Rail speeds drop dramatically at certain borders. Direct flights between major cities aren't always available. And with tourism and business travel on the rise, these cracks are becoming harder to ignore. This is where the idea of a mega hub steps in, not just to serve one nation, but to act as a central gateway for the entire continent. By combining air, rail, and road transport in one ultra-modern facility, Europe can close its infrastructure gaps, speed up journeys, and better balance traffic between east and west. In short, a well-placed mega-hub could turn hours of waiting into minutes of smooth transfer and help Europe's free movement truly live up to its potential. Why Poland? If you were to drop a pin at the geographic heart of Europe, you'd land in Poland. Sitting between the Baltic Sea to the north and the Carpathian Mountains to the south, Poland borders seven countries – Germany, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Ukraine, Belarus, Lithuania, and Russia's Kaliningrad region. That central position makes it a natural crossroads for trade, travel, and cultural exchange. But Poland's journey to becoming a transport powerhouse hasn't been easy. The 20th century brought devastation. During World War II, the country suffered material losses estimated at $48 billion in pre-war dollars. What followed was over four decades of Soviet influence, economic stagnation, and mounting debt. By the late 1980s, Poland was struggling just to maintain basic infrastructure. Then came a remarkable turnaround. Following the fall of communism, Poland embraced market reforms, joined NATO in 1999, and entered the European Union in 2004. In the decades since, it has been one of the fastest growing economies in the bloc, with GDP rising steadily even during global downturns. Strong manufacturing, a growing tech sector, and strategic foreign investment have fueled this transformation. Its location is a strategic gift. For Western Europe, Poland is the fastest land route into the Baltic states and much of Eastern Europe. For Eastern Europe, it's the most direct gateway to major Western markets. Add to that its proximity to growing Asian trade corridors, and you have the ideal spot for a mega transport hub that could redefine how the continent moves. In short, Poland isn't just a convenient choice, it's the obvious choice for Europe's next great transport transformation. The problems with current infrastructure. For all its strategic advantages, Poland's current transport infrastructure is straining under the weight of growing demand. And nowhere is this more visible than at Warsaw Chopin Airport. 
Chopin, the country's largest airport, sits just 10 kilometers from the city center. While its central location is convenient for travelers, it's a logistical nightmare for expansion. Surrounded by dense urban development, the airport has no room to add significant runways or terminals. A strict night curfew limits flights between 11 p.m. and 5.30 a.m., which means airlines can't operate the kind of round-the-clock schedules common at major global hubs. Noise pollution concerns from nearby residential areas add yet another layer of restrictions. The situation isn't much better on the ground. While Poland has invested heavily in road and rail upgrades over the past two decades, capacity bottlenecks remain. Rail journeys between key cities can still be surprisingly slow, and connections to international destinations are patchy. Freight transport faces similar challenges, with congestion and outdated infrastructure slowing down cargo movement. The result? A system that works, but only just. Without a bold, large-scale solution, Poland risks capping its own economic and transport potential. The current setup can't handle the projected growth in passengers, goods, and tourism over the next 20 years. That's why the idea of starting fresh with a purpose-built megahub is so compelling. It's the only way to leap ahead instead of playing constant catch-up. Introducing the Central Communication Port, CPK. The Central Communication Port, known in Poland as CPK, Centralny Port Komunikacyjny, is nothing short of a generational project, a $34 billion plan to create one of the most advanced transport hubs in the world. Scheduled to open in the late 2020s, CPK is designed from the ground up to integrate air, rail, and road connections into a single, seamless travel experience. At its core will be a world-class airport capable of handling 40 million passengers a year at launch with the ability to expand to 65 million or more in the decades ahead. This won't be a cramped retrofit like Warsaw Chopin. CPK is being built on a greenfield site about 37 kilometers west of Warsaw in Baranov. The location means fewer noise restrictions, no surrounding urban sprawl to limit growth, and vast open space for future runways, terminals, and logistics facilities. But CPK isn't just an airport. It's envisioned as a true intermodal hub. Inside the same complex, passengers will be able to step off a long-haul flight and board a high-speed train connecting them to major Polish cities in under 2.5 hours, and even to Berlin, Prague, or Vienna without ever leaving the terminal. The road network will be upgraded to funnel traffic directly into the complex, reducing congestion and improving freight efficiency. The ambition is clear. By placing CPK at the center of Europe's transport network, Poland aims to become the continent's most efficient entry point for both people and goods. From here, a traveler could land from New York, transfer to a high-speed train, and be in Krakow, Gdansk, or even another European capital in record time. It's bold, it's strategic, and if successful, it will completely rewrite the way Europe moves. The High-Speed Rail Vision The rail component of the Central Communication Port, CPK project, is as ambitious as the airport itself. And it's built around a simple but transformative idea. Poland in 100 minutes. The concept is straightforward. From CPK, you should be able to reach nearly every major Polish city in under 100 minutes by high-speed train. This isn't just about shaving a few minutes off travel times. It's about shrinking the entire country, making Warsaw, Krakow, Gdańsk, Poznań, and Rosłow feel like close neighbors rather than distant journeys. At the heart of this network will be the Y-Line, a high-speed corridor connecting Warsaw to both Poznan and Rosłow, with a central branch passing through Łódź. Here, engineers plan to construct a tunnel beneath the city, allowing trains to bypass surface congestion and maintain top speeds. From this spine, other lines will radiate outwards, linking CPK to Poland's regional centers. But the vision doesn't stop at national borders. The new network will tie directly into Rail Baltica, the EU-backed high-speed route running from Warsaw through Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, ultimately reaching Helsinki via ferry connection. 
Southward, plans call for extensions into the Czech Republic, providing direct links to Prague and potentially onward to Austria and Germany's high-speed systems. Integration will be the magic ingredient. The high-speed station at CPK will sit directly beneath the airport terminal, meaning a traveler arriving from Tokyo or Chicago can be in downtown Gdansk or Roswab without ever stepping outside. Freight services will also benefit, with faster cargo trains reducing delivery times between Poland and its neighbors. If the airport is CPK's beating heart, the high-speed rail is its circulatory system, pushing people, goods and opportunities across the country and into Europe with unprecedented speed and efficiency. Engineering Challenges and Innovations Building the Central Communication Port, CPK, isn't just an ambitious idea. It's a colossal engineering puzzle with thousands of moving parts, each needing to fit together perfectly. And perhaps the most daunting part? Everything, the airport, high-speed rail, and upgraded road systems must open at the same time on day one. One of the standout challenges is tunneling. The high-speed rail network will pass directly beneath CPK's airport runways and terminal buildings, requiring complex underground engineering. The tunnels must be deep enough to avoid interfering with aviation infrastructure, yet shallow enough to allow quick and easy passenger transfers between trains and planes. Vibration control, waterproofing, and long-term durability will be key. After all, once the airport is in operation, major tunnel repairs would be nearly impossible without massive disruptions. Then there's the issue of synchronization. Large projects often see one element finish early while others lag behind, but CPK's success depends on all components launching simultaneously. To manage this, planners are phasing construction like an intricate domino pattern, building rail alignments and road interchanges in parallel with terminal foundations and runway grading. This requires not just precise scheduling, but also constant communication between hundreds of contractors, engineers, and government agencies. A major innovation in the design process is what the team calls micro-flexibility. This means building with the future in mind, creating modular terminal sections that can be expanded without tearing down existing structures, leaving space for additional runways, and pre-installing utility corridors for technologies that might not even exist yet. The idea is to make CPK adaptable for the next 50 years, not just the next 15. When complete, CPK won't just be an engineering marvel because of its size, it will stand as a rare example of multiple massive builds perfectly synchronized into a single, unified transport ecosystem. It's a logistical ballet, with the clock ticking toward a flawless opening performance. The Bigger Picture – Europe's Transport Network The Central Communication Port, CPK, is not just a Polish project. It's a strategic piece of the Trans-European Transport Network, TEN-T, the EU's long-term plan to connect every member state with fast, efficient, and sustainable infrastructure. The ultimate goal is simple but monumental. Make it possible to travel between any two major European cities quickly and seamlessly, whether by air, rail, or road. For decades, the core of Europe's transport power has been concentrated in the West. Hubs like Frankfurt, Paris Charles de Gaulle, and Amsterdam Schiphol dominate long-haul traffic and cargo flows. But CPK has the potential to shift that balance eastward. By positioning a mega hub in Poland, geographically central, politically stable, and economically dynamic, the EU could unlock faster links between Western capitals and the rapidly growing economies of Central and Eastern Europe. This shift is more than symbolic. Businesses in Germany, France, and Scandinavia would gain quicker access to emerging markets in the Baltics, Balkans, and beyond. Manufacturers could route goods more efficiently, cutting transit times and reducing logistics costs. Tourism could see a major boost with high-speed rail opening up Poland, the Czech Republic, and the Baltic states to millions of travelers who currently stick to Western Europe's better-known destinations. In short, CPK isn't just an airport or a train station. It's a strategic pivot point in Europe's transport map, 
one that could redefine travel patterns, boost economic cohesion, and make the EU feel more connected than ever before. If 10T's dream is a truly unified European transport network, CPK could be the keystone holding it all together. The new cities around CPK. Around the central communication port, CPK, two entirely new urban zones are planned to rise from what is now mostly farmland, Cargo City and Airport City. Cargo City will be the logistics powerhouse. Located adjacent to the runways but away from passenger terminals, it's designed for non-stop freight handling, warehousing, and distribution. With direct links to high-speed rail and major highways, goods could move from air to road or rail in minutes, cutting delivery times across Europe. This hub is expected to attract global logistics giants, e-commerce companies, and manufacturing supply chains, bringing thousands of skilled and semi-skilled jobs to the region. Airport City, on the other hand, will be the commercial heart. Think business parks, hotels, conference centers, retail spaces, and even residential areas, all within walking distance of the airport and rail station. It's a model proven in cities like Amsterdam and Singapore, where airport-adjacent developments have become thriving economic clusters in their own right. In essence, CPK isn't just building an airport, it's building entire new cities designed for 21st century commerce and connectivity. Challenges, delays, and political hurdles. The Central Communication Port, CPK, project, despite its massive potential, hasn't been immune to turbulence, and not just in the aviation sense. In 2023, a change in Poland's government brought a shift in priorities. The incoming administration ordered a full audit of CPK's plans, budgets, and contracts, arguing that a project of this scale needed maximum transparency and public trust. While the review didn't kill the project, it did slow momentum as planners revalidated cost estimates, land acquisitions, and design details. One lingering question is the fate of Warsaw Chopin Airport. Will it close entirely once CPK opens or continue handling some short-haul and domestic flights? Closing it could focus all resources on CPK, but might inconvenience central Warsaw travelers. Keeping it open risks splitting traffic and weakening the new hub's dominance. Picture this. It's a crisp spring morning in 2035, and central communication port, CPK, is alive with motion. Sleek, high-speed trains glide into the underground station, delivering passengers from cities hundreds of kilometers away in under two hours. Above, jets from every corner of the globe taxi across vast runways, ready to carry travelers to five continents. In a single day, millions of people might pass through, business leaders, students, tourists, families, all using Poland as their gateway to Europe and beyond. Hotels buzz, conference halls hum, and cargo hubs move goods at record speeds. In the end, CPK is more than steel, glass, and concrete. It's a statement of ambition and connection, proof that when a continent dares to dream big, it can quite literally bring people closer together. The heartbeat of Europe could soon be found in the very center of Poland. 